Well, I've actually been struggling to do an introduction, <laughs> so I thought I'd instead show a, one of my paintings, and hopefully the painting can introduce me. <laughs> the main part of this video is actually about my Royal Academy Summer Exhibition entry. I got shortlisted, so I was asked by someone to make a video talking a bit about the painting. And I've wanted to make some kind of video about my work. I thought this gave me a way into it almost, so I thought I'd incorporate it into a, a bit of a longer video. So that's what this is. And I'm hoping that it might make me more confident to upload more to this channel because I, mean, I like seeing artists' processes behind work, so I figured that maybe people might like to see that on my channel. Um, but yeah, I'll just see how it goes and I'll see where it takes me. My Royal Academy submission is titled Yearning and I started it last year when I was just about to hand in my dissertation for my degree and I was kind of feeling a bit in that transitional stage where I wasn't quite sure what was to come next and I was weighing up all my options and I was maybe feeling a bit daunted at the thought of coming to the end of my degree and I just went out for this walk as I often do when I'm feeling like I just need a bit of headspace and it was quite a stormy day and kind of it in a way I think reflected my mood a bit but then there was this light coming through the clouds and it sort of gave me a bit of a sense of hope and I think in a way that summarises what maybe I want to achieve from my paintings. I, I mainly focus on landscapes and natural areas and from when I was younger I was always very inspired by the old masters and you know Turner and Constable and in the last few years I've also been looking at a lot of contemporary artists who maybe explore nature in a different way such as George Shaw, looking at maybe unexpected areas of nature and see as I've been living in London for the last four years and my work's mainly based around nature, I've had to find ways to improvise in a way so I often just go out on walks and d discover little pockets of nature within the city and I think that that's become now quite a big part of my work in that maybe it's not necessarily about big vast landscapes but rather finding the little smaller areas that perhaps are unexpected. A lot of my reference materials actually Maybe when I've gone out on a walk and I haven't necessarily planned to take pictures for a painting or find reference material, but because something's caught my attention, like for example on this walk, just the way that the light was coming through and just breaking through the clouds, it, I just got, I got my camera out really quickly and just snapped the picture and then my process is that I edit pictures a bit so I maybe play around a bit with the brightness and the contrast and usually I turn the saturation up a bit and then that's what I tend to paint from. Um, I usually start with a very brightly coloured ground so a, maybe a, a red or an orange, this one had a very red, maybe can't see it so much in the video but it's got kind of a really vibrant red ground. especially when a painting's got cooler tones, I think that really shows through and, and then I kind of scratch little bits out and I use a palette knife to go back into it and then actually with this one as well I even used pastels to bring some of the red back out because I thought maybe I'd got rid of it a bit too much. All of my paintings I actually quite like having the ground showing through so I don't like completely covering up that initial underpainting. And I think in general my paintings are about that dialogue between human and nature and something perhaps with technology and you know modern life we maybe don't have so much time for nature and I want to kind of remind people that it is so uplifting sometimes just to maybe even just to go out for a really quick five minute walk but you might see something you know even just sometimes the way that the light catches something it just captures my imagination then I have to rush home and convert that into a painting and in the last few years I've tended to add this silhouette figure within my paintings and 
I like it being a silhouette because I like that kind of feeling of anonymity. I don't want the painting to be focused on the purse. I want it to be more about the person within the landscape. So the person's relationship to the landscape rather than focusing too much on maybe what that person's thinking or feeling or who they are. But then I also feel like by having a person in it, it makes people relate to my painting. So maybe they can imagine themselves in that landscape. And I've actually had quite a lot of people saying to me with my paintings that, oh, I, I, that almost seems familiar to me, even though I haven't necessarily been there. It, it feels like almost a walk that I could have been on myself. through this whole video. Uh. I kind of just have